Hello, so this is my attempt at showing you um, my instructional strategies for my lesson on marine sediment in an oceanography class. Um, so this should kind of be in the middle of the PowerPoint. All right, so let's talk about sediment classification. Uh, classification of sediment is based off of two things. First off is size. Second is origin, and we'll get to that in a little bit. The scale that we use to measure size of sediment is the Wentworth scale, and it is based on grain size. So most of that will be on this corner over here. And I gave you the big four, right? The big four that we use, mud, silt, sand, and gravel. You all should be familiar with that at some point in your scientific career. We use those to um, show core size. Mud and clay, super duper fine, very, very small particles. And gravel is our bigger particles like cobble and boulder. The next way that we classify sediment is based off of origin, and the first one we have is lithogenous sediment. Litho, Latin for earth or land, so this is sediment that comes from the land, or rocks, right? That's what our land is made out of. And so when our rock or our sediment is eroded over time, it's going to end up being deposited into the ocean, and it is going to be transported via rivers, ice, wind and other processes. So here we see a close-up of under a microscope of what lithogenous sediment looks like, rounded rocks, all that jazz. The next type of sediment is biogenous, bio meaning life. Um, so this is going to come from living organisms, mostly animals, um, but plants that we see are phytoplankton. So most of our biogenous sediment does come from plankton, um, and then their exoskeletons end up breaking down. So our calcareous or meaning they're made up of calcium, exoskeletons end up being left behind, and then it gets deposited into our sediment. A particular biogenous sediment that's really cool to learn about is parrotfish, right? So parrotfish chew on coral because of the symbiotic algae that is inside of that coral, and it's, so it's going to chomp, chomp, chomp at that coral, but the exoskeleton of the coral can't be digested, so it ends up being excreted um, through the parrotfish and and creating sand. And so a parrotfish actually can excrete over a ton of sand per year. Um, and so environments where parrotfish are native tend to produce more sand than those without parrotfish and their topography actually changes. The third type of sediment based on classification is hydrogenous sediment, hydro meaning water. Um, so this is going to come from chemical reactions within the water. So our compounds are going to dissolve out of water um, examples are like carbonates and calcates. This picture right here is an oolite, um, which is just dissolved chemicals out of water, creating lots of calcium and calcite ions. And the last type of uh, classification of sediment based on origin is cosmogenous sediment. And this one's really cool um, because we don't really think about sediment coming from space, right? So cosmos, obviously meaning space, cosmology, the study of space. And so what happens is these sediments are actually going to filter through the atmosphere or be carried to Earth on meteorites. Um, and the most common type of cos cosmogenous sediment is a tektite. And that is what this picture is here. Um, and it is from meteorite impacts on our Earth. They are very, very rare. Um, and so this is a quite a large picture of tektites, actually. Um, to see this many in one photo is pretty rare. Um, but yeah, so that would be um, our origin and size of sediment, excuse me. And so now we come to our first clicker question, right? So everyone has their clicker. It should be paired up with my PowerPoint. Um, and your question says, what type of sediment has origins that can be traced to chemical reactions in water? And your options are lithogenous, hydrogenous, cosmogenous, and, oh, I'm sorry, I put hydrogenous on there twice. Oh, my. I meant biogenous for D, all right? So, obviously, don't put uh, D for that one because it's been repeated. But of those four, actually three, answer choices would you pick, all right? And so, at this point in the lecture, the next slide would show the data of what the students have chosen. Um, and if a lot of students chose A, um, which was wrong, or C, which was wrong, um, we would go back and review that information to make sure that they understood it. But if most of the class put B or D, which both of them are right, uh, we can move on to the next question or the next topic of conversation. Thank you.